You know, for the last two videos, I was like, why is my audio quality so bad? I'm not, I can't release a video like this. And then, um, and then just a little bit ago after I recorded this video another time, I turned around and I'm like, what is that noise? And I realized, oh yeah, I've been playing PS3 and PS2 games all week. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of a bit of a problem because PS2 and PS3 are very loud like just as loud as a computer and they were right next to my microphone so I'm gonna be re-recording the last two videos um, but that's okay but on to the um, point of this video basically when we talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2 and let me just get this out of the gate I love Star Wars man like especially recently I am loving Star Wars man I've like have all the movies and rewatching all of them I'm playing the games I actually bought three games recently. I'm watching extra lore videos, which are kind of fun. But let's start this review off in a weird way. Let's talk about HDR first. This is kind of a tradition I have when I'm talking about games that support HDR. Um, I'm not able to put HDR video on your screen, and I'm sorry about that, I truly am. But the reason is because I don't have any of the encoders or anything. Um, so that, that's just gonna have to be what I have to deal with in this you know, scenario, and I can get the encoders, obviously, but, you know, it's just not a big enough deal for me to want to do. But, um, the HDR in this game is amazing. It's not obtrusive in any way. You can tell it's there. It makes the game look so much better, in my thought. And there's just... If you have the ability to use HDR in a game, uh, you need to do it in this game. Because this game is just a perfect balance of like, hey, you're not gonna fuck your eyeballs up because, you know, like Battlefield 1 and the other games I'm reviewing recently. The HDR basically is just like shooting yourself in the leg because you're not gonna be able to see the enemies. But in this game, it's the perfect balance of looking amazing, performing pretty goddamn well, and not being super difficult for you to be able to identify things from other things. Especially in games like Battlefield 1, again, I'm going to bring that one up because that's what my next video is on. Um, those games with their mixes of, like, brown, green, and, like, realistic military shooter colors, it's almost impossible with an HDR uh, thing turned on to see where the enemies are actually located, or, like, what's a tank and what's just a tree. Uh, and it's pretty dumb to say that, but it really, like, turn on HDR if you have that game and you'll understand what I mean. It's really difficult to see um, the enemies and even sometimes your teammates, even though they have t name tags above them. Um, and in this game, it's completely different due to the fact that everything is usually a color of white or, like, a color of um, something else. And the characters all always contrast really well with the backgrounds. Uh, like, for instance, you can see Chewbacca on Hoth because, you know, brown on white, right? It's very easy for you to tell, uh, oh, there's an enemy over there, or oh, there's a friendly over there. Um, Count Dooku, you know, all these, like, black-colored characters. Um, and then you obviously have, like, gray hallways, but you'll never see something that's like, oh, that's a problem, you know? That, that blends in too much. We need to figure out how to reduce that. Like, even in CSGO, which is one of the most competitive games in the world, um, it really does have some visibility options. Or, I meant visibility problems. But the visibility in this game is just fantastic, uh, even with HDR enabled. So that's why I really recommend you play with HDR if you have an HDR monitor. Let me just get straight to the point. Do I think this game is worth the retail price of 30 something dollars. If you love Star Wars, yes. Um, I'm gonna tell you this game is not very good though if you don't like Star Wars. The main reason why I played this game is the single player campaign, which was fucking amazing because I love Star Wars, man. And I love like some of the abilities like the Killstreak Vanguard um, and so many different other abilities that are just so fun to use. You get the Killstreak Vanguard, you get the Heal Up perk, and you just press both of them at the same time and just run at the stormtroopers and go and it's so fun it is so fun and the the campaign has an amazing story the story carries it 
the characters carry it, the writing carries it, the visuals carry it, the, the everything carries it. This is just a fantastic single player experience. And the multiplayer is just the cherry on the top. Right now you're seeing a uh, normal mode um, of the game. I don't really remember what it's called, um, but it's just absolutely amazing to play this mode with um, just random people. And I can even think how much more fun it would be if I had friends who owned this game too. Um, and I, I, I'm playing with bots in the background, and yeah, I get I'm bad. Um, I don't exactly like this as a multiplayer competitive game though. Uh, it doesn't really work in my mind due to the fact that all of the sensitivities for zoomed in guns are different, which is a very confusing option for a developer to take in that scenario, but, um, you know, it's not my game, right? I didn't make the game. I do like to play the single player, um, recreation though. More Battlefield games and more EA first person shooters and more DICE first, and first person shooters need to have this mode where it's you versus however many AI you want. It's so fun, you know? And I think even, like, being able to break your game with these AIs, like the Ravenfield lets you type in whatever the hell number you want, and it's amazing. Uh, I would like to see that added, maybe through a mod or maybe through something else. But um, having absolutely massive battles, that'd be fun. Map selection is exquisite. It is amazing. There's so many different maps. I have realized I haven't even told you. This game comes with three arrows in it, right? Most of the uh, games in the Battlefield series only come with like one or two arrows. Uh, usually just one, though. Um, I do know that the LEGO games, which have a lot of nostalgia for me, um, they do come with two arrows in them, I'm pretty sure. This game has all three. The newest uh, Disney one, which is where the campaign takes place. Uh, I would say the campaign t is taken away a little bit because of this, but it was written so well that I don't even care that it's in the new um, shitty Star Wars Disney crap. Uh, one and yeah, fight me. I don't care. That is bad. It just has awful rating. It has cool visuals, but fight me did. Um, and you know, like I, I I do really like the story, even though like it's in the Disney universe uh, version of Star Wars, the Disney trilogy of Star Wars. Um, probably one of the most played versions of the game because uh, you know you can have multiplayer matches in the classic Republic, the um, Resistance and the, um, whatever the new one's called, the Disney trilogy, and obviously the, um, Resistance phase is probably going to be the most popular for the rest of time, just due to the fact that that's the classic Star Wars movie trilogy, um, and everybody really likes those movies a whole lot, um, that's the one I probably end up playing the most, uh, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I've never played the Disney one, uh, in the multiplayer, I bet it's just as good as the other ones though, so, you know, like if it does have any problems, I'm, I don't know. But as far as I know, it's probably just going to be the same as like the other ones with different characters. You can play as Count Dooku, you can play, so you know, like you get to play as a clone trooper obviously, and that's the basic one, you can choose Assault class, um, you can choose the uh, LMG class, for lack of a better word, or the Heavy class is what it's called in this game. Um, the specialist class is a sniper, the officer class which has a pistol and he can like have a whole bunch of AOE moves which uh, help out your team more than it actually helps you out. So uh, if you're running a four man squad that you actually know uh, in real life you can really help them out by having one officer and probably a heavy and two assaults and you can probably just dominate the map with that and it'll be f like fun as hell, trust me. You also have some amazing, amazing like characters. So as you play, you'll get things called battle points. And these battle points, you shoot you know, people and you get like a hundred battle points and stuff like that. And uh, when you get a kill, you get like a thousand battle points. You get to like 4,000 battle points and you get to play like Count Dooku or Mace Windu or General Grievous or whoever, which side you're playing on the war. So obviously you have the you know, two main sides, the dark side and the light side, or the Republic and the, you know, you get what I mean, right? If, you, if you're a Star Wars fan, you understand what I mean. Um, you get to play characters that were influential in the time periods 
Meaning you could take an, on an entire clone army as Darth Maul and just like ravage them and it would be so fun. Or like choose Yoda and kill everybody as Yoda and, and it's just like it's insanely fun when you get those classes because they're not super OP, let me tell you that. They're not like, oh yeah, if you see Darth Maul and you your squad is there, you're gonna die. If you have more than one person, they're probably all like I would say the special characters die probably 40% of the time if you have more than one person and, it, and the chances go up as there's more and more people but the thing is is um the the fun part about playing them is that like you get to kind of go around the like outskirts of the map and just like take on people one-on-one -on -one where they're kind of like overstretched and out of their team's grasps and you just kind of like carry them into the like darkness it's kind of funny because you know like they'll they'll kind of just be chilling outside the map you know sniping or something and you're just like bam or behind them darth maul killing everybody it's super fun i, I really do like the uh characters like that there's ones with blasters there's ones with snipers obviously you know you got you don't have just lightsaber wielders but um there's a lot of a lot of good things in this game that i really like i do hear that there is a big problem with like there's things that you can just buy from EA and you get a massive advantage. Um, I haven't known too much about that, I haven't explored this game enough, but uh, just know that. So something I think will be really telling about this game is me telling you the story of the first time I played it, which was, you know, like, I was supposed to go to sleep pretty soon, and I was actually pretty tired at the time. Uh, and I bought, I just bought the game, and I just downloaded all of them, and uh, all of the games in the bundle that I bought, and I was like, okay, well, I think it's about time to um, just play like one or two missions in the campaign. So I set up all the settings, I got into the campaign, four hours later, <laughs> um, the game crashed. Like, I was on the last mission, and the last mission has like a bug. Um, where if you have Direct X12 enabled, by the way, don't en enable Direct X12. There's basically no reason. It kind of just makes the game a glitchy mess for me, at least. And I have like a 2060 Super, uh, 11900K. I don't know. I have an 11 something K, and um, oh no, nine 9600 9600K. Yeah, I have pretty modern hard hardware, right? That's the point I'm trying to get to you and all the drivers are uh, completely up to date. Uh, it just, DirectX 12 just doesn't work. Um, and a lot of people have that problem, so just don't enable it, it's not worth it. Um, you, you might get a few like extra features or frames or whatever if you do enable it, but it's not, it's not worth it. This game is totally worth the retail price, even now, because there's not gonna be another massively multiplayer Star Wars game to this scale in quite some time, so I can kind of guarantee that this game will remain at least active for the next year or two. Um, so uh, yeah, like that's a really good price for it, like the retail price, and you can wait for a sale, and the sales I'm sure are great. Uh, EA games do have pretty big sales usually, uh, they just don't happen nearly as often. Um, but if you're willing to wait till like Christmas or something, which I'm sure a lot of the AA games will be on sale at that time, um, go ahead, buy this game, like, it's so good, especially if you love Star Wars, actually only if you love Star Wars, um, the single player is worth the, well, I think it's 30 bucks, that's what I bought for, 30 bucks, the single player alone with the bot, the matches against AI, they're just worth the 30 bucks, like, I don't even care about saying that, yeah, like, you shouldn't buy this game, you should totally buy this game at retail price, um, you can totally wait for sales, no problem with that. Rating this game is going to be so difficult for me because I have to take into account that people don't like, not all, not everybody likes Star Wars, right? I just need you guys to know that this rating scale is going to be in the eye of the beholder, really, so it's kind of going to be my opinion. Um, a lot of games I do say I rate basically 100% fair to um, every metric I could think of. Like CSGO, uh, I give that a very, very high score because 
I firmly believe that there is no better game uh, than CSGO that is a competitive multiplayer shooter. It's a category of its own, basically, because anything that tries to compete with it was created after CS 1.6 or was flawed in a major way. Like Quake is the closest thing I could say that didn't com didn't get any inspiration from Counter-Strike. Obviously, because Counter-Strike 1.6 wasn't even out at that time. So I have some really good reasons for why uh, I think CSGO is very highly rated on my list. Um, I might do a review of it one day, just so you know. But getting back on topic, I'm going to give this game, in the eye of somebody who loves Star Wars, I'm going to give it an official 6.5 out of 10. I'm already starting the decimals, and this isn't what I wanted. Uh, to do, but I'm gonna give it a 6.5 out of 10, um, just because I think it's it beats out Hotline Miami just by a bit. I say this because it's kind of got more replayability than Hotline Miami. I mean, Hotline Miami is a like score settling game, so you can obviously play it an infinite amount of times if you wanted to, but it doesn't really ever get more interesting over time with a multiplayer game you're kind of going to have a higher score just due to the fact that it's more replayable. You know, it's not like something that you're going to play once and kind of not be able to play again just because of the fact that it's, well, you know, there's no real reason to play it again. <laughs> I'd say the highest a single player game can get to is around a 7. And that's just due to the fact that in my mind, you're not going to have a single player game that's just so good that it can really get up there with multiplayer games that are infinitely replayable and infinitely changeable over time, especially with modding and stuff like that like CSGO has and CS 1.6 and CS Source has modding communities and CS 1.6 is like, what, 1996? That's some, like very, very long time ago um, that that game was made and it still has a very sizable community. So I say 6.5. For this game, it's very, very fun. Um, I'm sure it's way more fun with friends, I'm sure, of a lot of things that this game is just excels at. I just don't think it's that good of a multiplayer shooter game, to be honest with you. It, there's a lot of reasons why I say that. Um, the sensitivity for each gun when you zoom in is different for some reason. I don't, I don't understand why, but that's just a thing that exists, so um, you're going to have to deal with that if you ever play the game. Uh, the single player with bots kind of just puts it up that 0.5. I would have rated this a 6 if it didn't have single player with bots, but I am a sucker up for games that are infinitely replayable, um, and they have single player support with that infinite replayability, right? So like Ravenfield, I count that as like an infinitely replayable game due to the fact that every match, no matter um, how you think about it, right, that every match is different. So you have such a very, very high replayability that I can count it as almost a multiplayer game, even though it's a single player game. That's what this uh, single player experience with the um, uh, AI versus player is uh, kind of reminiscent of. It's kind of reminiscent of like when this game dies, because all games die eventually. When this game dies, you'll still be able to play it because there's bots, and it's just going to be still fun. And against the bots, you do have access to everything, um, which is extremely fun, especially for people who don't want to waste their time unlocking stuff and don't want to waste their time getting better and better at the game, right, to play the game um, more efficiently. And people, like A lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people don't want to waste their time, and it seems like they really hit the nail on the head with this one and realized... Yeah, there's always going to be those people who don't want to do that. There's always going to be those people who don't want to continuously get better at a game, and they're like, let's make something just for those people. All right, well, I'm getting around the 20-minute mark, which is kind of the maximum length for some of these videos that I'm going to do. So I'm going to end it here. 6.5 out of 10, obviously. I've said that already. Um, and I'll put up a little chart at the end, too, uh, somewhere around in this video. I don't know where I'll do it. Uh, to show you like the ranking leaderboards because um, I'm gonna start making like 
these videos every now and then, you know, every month or two, and you're going to be, you know, s expecting the leaderboard to change. All right, well, 20 minutes has passed. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, monthly videos. Please subscribe, please comment with any sort of suggestion. I read all the comments, obviously, because I don't have that many of them, and I would definitely like more comments. Well, I'll see you guys.